It doesn't work for every DAC or stereo, but many will sound better by applying a simple change to your settings. When playing digital audio, the signal has to be converted to analog. To do this, it has to pass through a so-called reconstruction filter. It filters out anything above half the sampling frequency to avoid aliasing. Aliasing is the result of false interpretation of the digital information when not filtered at half the sampling frequency. Severe aliasing sounds like those robot voices in the 80s science fiction movies. In digital equipment it never goes that wrong, but it causes things like harshness of the sound and loss of resolution. Reconstruction filters always have impact on the sound quality. But it's hard to identify since the filters can't be switched off. Sometimes different filters can be chosen based on different compromises, but compromises nonetheless. So you choose the filter that to your ears has the best compromise. Limited design budgets demand more compromises than extended budgets. Filters have the habit of overshooting. Compare it with a car hanging over in a sharp bend. It's not designed to do that, it's just centrifugal force. Filters have their own centrifugal force, meaning that a waveform gets swung up higher than can be coded. It's running out of bits or volts. Let's use a simple waveform to illustrate this. The horizontal lines indicate the maximum level, where all the bits in the digital code are 1 or in the analog domain where the maximum output voltage is reached. Now let's see what happens if the filter makes the signal to overshoot. You can see that at both the positive and the negative maximum the amplitude exceeds the maximum signal strength. What happens then is that the top of the waveform is cut off. This is called clipping and sounds rather bad. When this happens in the analog domain it's easier identified by ear. In the digital domain it can be only some samples that overshoot and that's less easy to identify. It just starts to sound more digital. The solution is relatively simple. In the digital domain lower the level by a few dBs, often 3 dBs is used. But to do this you must be able to lower the volume before the digital signal reaches the digital to analog conversion. CD players and network players don't usually offer this possibility, unless you use a network player as a digital source and have the DA conversion done by an external DAC. If then the player has a volume control in the digital domain, you can lower the digital output by 3 dBs and the problem will disappear provided it was a problem in the first place of course. If you use a computer with bitperfect player software that also has software volume control, you can set that to minus 3 dB, provided you use the volume control of your amp to set the playback volume. That works for DACs that are connected directly to the computer and DACs connected over network bridges. Please note that most software players control the volume control on the DAC when connected over USB, which will be past the reconstruction filter. When that is the case, look for a setting that activates software volume control, like here in Ordevana. Some player software like Rune have a setting to by default attenuate the output signal by 3 dBs. Here you can also switch on the clipping indicator that will turn red. J River Media Center has a clip protection that automatically solves the problem. Are there other solutions? Well, if your digital player has a software volume control, you can set it to minus 3 dBs and set the playback volume on the amp. The Grim Audio Mu 1 digital player has a setting that includes a minus 3 dB step in the processor to prevent overshoot. It might be that other hardware has equal provisions. 
If you know gear that has, please let us know. Doesn't the software volume control in the player software create a loss? Yes, all digital processing creates losses, like analog volume control and tone control creates losses. But the losses the digital volume control in quality music player software causes is considerably small and certainly smaller than the quality loss the overshooting reconstruction filter causes. Up till now we discussed the problem of digital reconstruction filters as used for upscaling aka upsampling. Non-upsampling DACs, NOS DACs for short, don't use these filters and that is the reason they are popular in some circles. Digital reconstruction filters found in cheaper equipment have rather negative effect on the sound quality and the same goes for analog reconstruction filters. But the negative effect differs between digital and analog. This is what about happens inside an upsampling DAC. From the digital input the signal goes to the DAC chip with integrated upsampling, followed by an analog filter that sends the analog signal to the output. A simple good sounding analog filter can be used since the sampling frequency is 2 to 8 times higher because of the upsampling. The DAC chip with integrated upsampling has limited computational power and thus relatively simple upsampling. More advanced designs use DAC chips that allow for an external microprocessor to do the upsampling while top designs use FPGAs to do the upsampling and often also the digital to analog conversion. These can be uploaded with proprietary filter codes. With upsampling DACs a simple analog filter can be used since the sampling frequency is 2 to 8 times higher because of the upsampling. Every doubling of the sampling frequency gives another octave to roll of the filter. So upsampling to 192 kHz means that the reconstruction filter has to filter at 96 kHz. In practice the filter already will set in quite a bit lower, for instance at 40 kHz and has a more gradual slope which will sound better, all other things being equal. Now let's look at the non-oversampling DAC aka NOS DAC. After the digital input the signal is sent directly to the D to A conversion. From there it is sent to the analog reconstruction filter that now has to be extremely steep. In theory 96 dB per single note. That is already quite a job in the digital domain, in the analog domain it's even harder. But the artifacts of digital filters differ from those of analog filters while again budgets play a defining factor. Steep analog filters can also overshoot but the clipping is somewhat softer. If you can correct overshoot problems in upsampling DACs by lowering the level in the digital domain, you will often see, or rather hear, that the sound quality will improve. Harshness on voices and brass will be reduced. Resolution might improve. The stereo image will be better defined and so on. To what degree depends on the gear you use. Try it and report back if you have been successful. When this video goes online on YouTube I will be visiting the High End Munich show that opens to the public on the 20th and 21st of May 2023. Perhaps we will see each other there. By the way, did you know that my videos are available on Patreon one week earlier? Access to Patreon comes at a small charge to support the channel. Which brings me to the end of this video. See you next Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video in the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video in YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do,
enjoy the music.